welcome to cross-platform. And this is what happened when you are not ready. So let's go back <laughs> in. And I've only put on the show, the first That's one, fine. I think. It's fine. Welcome to Cross-Platform Podcast, where we discuss how to solve productivity problems across platforms. I'm Augusto Pinot. And I'm Mark Elwix. And today, we are going to talk about upgrading your equipment and your machine. And this happened to be an interesting week as we were looking at the news and Apple is releasing new hardware next week. Samsung is releasing something next week. And Google is releasing at least phones next week. So there is going to be a lot of hardware. Microsoft announced their Surface recently. So to upgrade or not upgrade, that's the question. This this is perfect timing on this. It really is because there are so many opportunities with the new announcements coming out uh, from all the major players, as well as we're getting into the fall season now and people are going to be locked more in the house than they have been before, you know, during the course of the year, we got out just a little bit during the summer, um, but we're you know going back in again. So when we think about upgrading, upgrading is not just buying a new computer. Upgrading can be any number of pieces of this cross-platform environment that you've created. Uh, upgrading your phone, upgrading your keyboard, your mouse. In the pre-show, Augusto and I were chatting about upgrading our office environments to be able to handle different things and, and change both of us specifically around recording capabilities. And this is one of the things that I love to get into conversations with people about because we often don't think about the ramifications of these kinds of upgrades and changes until we're already in the midst of them. Uh, we, we go out and we say, oh, I want a new monitor. I'd like, I'd like to upgrade my monitor. Well, that's great. Upgrade your monitor. If you can do that, fantastic. But how's that going to impact how you work? What is it going to improve? Is it going to keep it the same? Are there factors that you have to take into consideration that you're going to adjust how your environment functions to take into account that oh, you have this new thing? Peripherals are easy. Peripherals, well, I don't want to say easy. They're easier. Replacing your mouse, your keyboard, lighting, microphones, things like that. It's easier to accommodate. The more technologically involved something is the more you have to do some research but when we start talking about our primary devices when we start talking about our computers and our phones and those sorts of things now we've got more planning now we've got not only how is it going to change but how are we going to get through that process how long is it going to take Augusta when you get let's say you get a new iPad how long before you feel really comfortable on that new device moving from an old iPad to a new one? All right. Well, he's working on something. I'll, when I go through and update something, let's say, for example, I upgrade my phone. This is one of those challenge times because one, I have to think about this device is, one and one a with my computer as the most important devices that i have not only for work purposes but personally i've got a ton of stuff in there i live and die by that thing so that time period that i'm transitioning from one device to another i have to assume is going to be downtime for periods of it i am not going to be able to interact with the materials and the information that are on that device if it's the same manufacturer, in this case, Samsung for me, they have tools to allow me to transition the content from one to the other. And those tools are, are fairly robust, but they don't do everything. They sure as heck don't transfer everything. And I have to account for everything that's not going to naturally transition. Augusto, when you go through an Apple upgrade, how have you found that process to be for you? What, what have been the, the strengths and the negative parts of that process of upgrading an Apple device? 
You know, I'm going to say Apple make it really, really easy. At least go Apple to Apple. Mm -hmm. um, I don't, I remember, I, it's been a really long time since I go to a Windows machine. So the last transition I did Windows to Mac, that was painful. Uh, it took me a while. Plus, I was setting up a new computer, a new operating system. Uh, it was great, but it but it was it wasn't easy. It wasn't just connect and go. My last Mac upgrade was a piece of cake. I just basically connect them on the network and say transfer. And God knows how many hours later, I had the same Mac just on the new computer. Mm -hmm. And same thing with the iPads. Uh, so Apple has done that work really, really, really simple. Even this year when I got the iPad Pro, I just went there and says, restore from this backup and it moved everything from the old Mac, or the old iPad to this mm -hmm. one. And I was done in whatever time was that transfer done. So it is. it was really, really easy. My experience with Windows was never that easy. Um, um, no. And again, I don't know. It was because I was that was always an auxiliary machine, or was always a machine that I have for testing for things for clients, and has never been my main machine. Or it is because it is more complicated. I don't know. I don't know how to be really objective. In, no, it's it's definitely more complicated. There's no question about it. I've been doing Windows upgrades since Windows was a thing. I mean, I've I've upgraded machines since Windows 1.0. And it has never been an easy yeah. process because it has an inherent legacy to it, as well as the fact that they're dealing with so many different hardware configurations. Windows doesn't look the same. Heck, it can look different when you install it and uninstall it and reinstall it. Right. It doesn't look the same uh, just because of versioning and things like that. So transitioning between devices can be very complicated. And this this goes hand in hand with some things that you and I have talked about numerous times in the past about leveraging things like cloud-based storage where you don't have to worry about does the old hard drive content need to be moved to the new hard drive? You don't have to worry about it if it's parked in the cloud because you just need access to it. If you have a device like a Chromebook, Chromebooks have a lot of the similar capability of merging the cloud interface as well as that kind of seamlessness that Apple brings to the table because you're signing in, in this right. case, with a Google account and it pulls itself down. If you ever want to see what an upgrade on a Chromebook is like, just do a power wash on an existing Chromebook. That's basically the process. Mm -hmm. It goes through and it will restore all your apps and it'll put everything in place. The only thing it won't bring over is anything that's stored on the hard drive of that particular device. Um, it's one of the reasons why in my Chromebooks I always use micro SD cards because then I can just pop the card out, pop it into another Chromebook that supports it, and I'm off and running. So those types of things, if you're within one of those ecosystems like Chrome OS or Apple, that upgrade process isn't too hard. I mean, you, you can go through it pretty quickly. If you're dealing with something, like we said, like Windows, Windows requires a lot more thought, especially if you're changing devices significantly. I'm looking at this change right now within my office. I have an all-in-one machine that I use as a primary machine. It also happens to be the monitor for multiple devices as well. Well, going through the Windows update process, it has casually told me that it cannot be upgraded to Windows 11. Now, that's fine. I mean, I can't use Windows 11. Right, well, I can, but I have no interest in using Windows 11 right now. But that just means that this has a clearly determined end of life now. And almost all devices do. There's a point where they're just not going to be able to keep up with the, the way things go. Um, Mobile devices more than anything else because mobile devices stop receiving security updates a lot sooner than desktop devices. So looking at this set of options that I have in front of me now, I say, okay, I want to upgrade. Well, now what am I going to upgrade? Am I going to get another all-in-one? Am I going to get a laptop? Am I going to get a desktop? Am I going to, if I get a laptop or a desktop, 
Well, if I get a laptop, I don't have to get a monitor, but I probably want a monitor, so now I have to buy a monitor as well as the laptop. If I get a desktop, I'm going to need a monitor because I don't have one. This is where I can actually spend an, ex an exorbitant amount of time trying to plan out this upgrade. But you see, you made an important point. You can spend an incredible amount of time, but you have knowledge into this. Right. Okay. And one of the things I want to bring are two things. You know, what happened on that experience when you have the knowledge and what happened when you don't? And that's, that's a perfect question for this, because if I were to try to do this same exercise on the Apple side, I'd have no idea where to start. Mm -hmm. I mean, I could sit down and I could do the research and I could do the digging and I could probably figure it out. And migrating from one platform to the other, I, I could probably get it over there with about 80 to 90% success. Mm -hmm. I guarantee there will be some things I will foul up. But for people who aren't, you know, as deep into the, the technical parts of this, this can be really hard. Yeah. You walk into a location and say, yeah, I want to buy a computer. And you have a computer. Now what do you do? How do you get it from point A to point B? How do you transfer files? Something as simple as transferring the files themselves. If you're using, let's say, cloud-based storage, you're going to spend a period of time getting everything off that current machine, mm -hmm. uploading it somewhere, and then setting up that new machine and downloading it. Well, that time period between when you upload and when you download, you're not really changing those files, at least typically you aren't. So you're dealing in, with an, a, a period of unproductive time. And how long that time period is going to be can really have an impact. Oh, yeah. it, it can have a significant Im impact. Uh, corporations and businesses have to account for this all the time. It's the reason why most businesses and corporations will do significant upgrades on during, quote, downtime, over weekends, over holidays, and things like that. Uh, school districts do it over the summer. So you're able to say, okay, if this doesn't go right, which we both know instances <laughs> when <laughs> Murphy's Law cre creeps in all the time, yep. how are you going to handle it? You know, what What's going to be the cause and effect that you're able to get through this upgrade to a point where you're comfortable with it? And at what point are you going to be comfortable with releasing the old device? Right. That, I think, is probably one of the biggest problem ones that I see. I don't remember which Windows was. I think it was Windows 7. I think that's the last one I I remember I had a, a Windows. So uh, we moved from XP to 7, I think it was. Mm -hmm. And I made that upgrade. I, I said, oh, I can make the upgrade on Friday afternoon. I will take the afternoon. I needed to travel for work on Monday. I said, that's going to be fine. It went not. It was actually went terrible. And that was the moment. No. And, and I made all the mistakes because I always said the people who knows, sadly, because we, we think we know or because we know, we take less safety precautions than the people who don't know. Person who don't know will have triple check their backup. I said, it's going to be mm -hmm. fine. <laughs> it did it. And I remember it. It's still a years later, a trauma in my heart. Okay. Because one of the things that were there was the keynote that I needed to present on Monday. And I had the latest, the prior versions, but not the final version. Because mm -hmm. What's going to happen? So, yeah, it's, it's definitely, if you've ever been through that experience of saying, yeah, you know, I can go through this upgrade and you do the upgrade. And then a few weeks afterwards, you're going, where is that file? Where was that information? Mm -hmm. where, and then you realize that it didn't come over for okay. some reason. And often it's not a technical reason. It's a reason that it just got missed. Right. I mean, it was in a folder sitting on your desktop somewhere that you lost track of. You, you just threw it there that you knew you'd get back to it later on. And it wound up getting lost and it turns out you need it. So planning that out, one of those first steps, and you called it out right there, backing up your information is critical. It is absolutely, you should be doing that anyway. You should be going through that exercise anyway. 
so one of the first things I recommend to people is have an organized file structure. It's mm -hmm. really easy to use the documents folder on a Windows machine. I'm not sure what the equivalent is on, on the Apple side. Uh, but just throw everything in there and just dump it in there because that's where it wants to save as a default and the downloads want to save in the downloads folder and things like that. But when you're backing that up, you have to make sure that that's what you want to back up. That content is going to be pushed off to something else. And it's worth, when you're thinking about investing in hardware, having some sort of an external hard drive is absolutely worth the investment in yep. my book. Um, they're not expensive anymore. They used to be incredibly expensive, several hundred dollars to get, you know, 250 gig of storage. Uh, you can get multiple terabytes now of storage for under a hundred dollars as an external USB drive. And just something like that, where you're taking that documents folder and copying it over to that hard drive before you start your process will give you a huge amount of not only confidence, but a sense of well-being that, okay, even if this does go off the rails, I'm not going to lose my stuff. Uh, that's a big step. And it mm -hmm. goes, goes a long way for you to be able to say, okay, I'm going to do this upgrade. Now, when we talk about upgrades, there's really two types of upgrades. There's the actual hardware upgrade where you're investing in new tech. And then there's software upgrades. Software upgrades are normally upgrades in place. So to use the Windows example, I'm going from Windows 7 to Windows 10. I'm going from Windows 10 to Windows 11. Um, I'm doing large service updates. Let's say in Windows, I'm going to you know version 1903 or those large deployments that happen. Those are all updates. Those can, all can have negative ramifications on your productivity if they go off the rails. So every time you go through one of those, it's good on a recurring basis to make sure that you've got your materials backed up. You're, you're ready to go when this stuff boots up and it starts to go through its update process. Anyone who's ever encountered, especially on the Windows side, the lovely blue screen of death, during an upgrade, there is nothing that will cause your heart to constrict just a little bit like that display, like the machine is not going to come up. Or even better, watching it go through an upgrade and that little percentage counter is moving along just fine and then it stops at a number and it's 5 minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes at that same number and you're like you're giving me anxiety and i'm not having a blue screen exactly of that right now. <laughs> it's flashbacks it, it is a traumatic experience and it can be i don't want to scare people about it i don't want to terrify people about that process but it it can be a traumatic experience to see because you don't know what to do then so that's the second thing i tell people not only back up your information but Review everything about the process of the upgrade and look up what do you do when it fails. Should I just turn the machine off and back on again? Should I just let it sit there and show it? Have some sort of a plan of action if things shouldn't work right. And the reason why I say to do that up front is because often when that goes off the rails, that machine is what was originally going to let you look up what that answer would be. Uh, you can often just run to another device, but again, that's more anxiety than you need. So having that plan of action is really important for that sense of well-being. There's another part of that. It's like 2B as part of the one, two steps there. And that would be, is there a way to do what's called a rollback? Is there a way to literally push the install back to what it was before you started the process? Um, a lot of times, for example, within Windows, it's called recovery mode and you're able to go through and restore things that way. Uh, literally, it'll on most later versions of Windows, you can even have it restore back to factory settings. 
yeah, the odds are pretty good. You're going to lose some installs of software and things like that, and you'll have to reinstall them and reconfigure them, but at least the machine's working again. Things like a Chromebook, that's where you have a power wash capability. I had a Chromebook the other day. I started my update, my primary Chromebook. I started an update on, and it went, eh, and it just locked completely, and I literally had to restore it from a USB. Um, there are applications for Chrome OS where you can go in and create a restore USB that you plug into the side, you reboot the machine, and it reloads the operating system from there. Took a little while longer. I wasn't real happy about it, but it worked. And the machine's back up and running just fine now. So there are ways to do it. Phones, eh, that's a little bit harder because when a phone bricks or blue screens, there aren't the easiest ways to get back into it. There's usually recovery screens and settings like that, but that's going to require some internet searching and some patience to be able to go back in and, and take a look at it. Often that's where I see most frequently people go into carrier stores and they say, hey, my phone isn't working. You tried to do an update and it quit. That's often where they'll help you out with those types of things. Right. But again, thinking about that update, iOS 15 is, is it out now? I can't remember if it's out or if it's like within like a couple of weeks. Um, I know the new version of Android, Android 12 will be starting to hit devices much more rapidly once they get out of beta. Same type of situation. Every time you have a major update like that, you want to think carefully about, okay, what's going to happen if this goes off the rails? How am I protecting myself accordingly? Mm -hmm. So let's get away from the doom and gloom for a little bit. We know this stuff can can go sideways. Let's talk about the positives but about it, upgrading. And before the positive, yeah. let's talk about the fun part of updating. Uh, True. I don't know if you consider those the positive, but for me are the fun. Mm -hmm. Okay, fine. You have your old device. Now you're going to upgrade. Are you going to go change? Are you going from Windows to Chromebook mm -hmm. or from Windows to Mac or from Mac to Windows or to Chromebook? Okay, those are your three standard poisons. Okay. And that's really fun because, as you said, if I tell you go and buy a Windows machine, you have the knowledge, the experience, you know exactly what you need, easy for you to do. But if I tell you, okay, go and buy a Mac, mm -hmm. now that will put a break on your decision. Say, okay, what do I really need? How my needs translate into the Mac language. And it's not that it's not possible. It's just, oh, you need to think about it. You know, it is, if I will decide now that I'm going to stop being iPad only, okay, or, or that I need a Mac to work or that I want a PC to work, I really need to slow down and think because I'm going to need to translate my needs from something that is not, easy to translate okay this ipad how i compare my ipad with the macbook or with a pc or with a surface so how much power the software on those machines it's going to need what kind of software mm -hmm. do i must have okay versus what kind of software oh, well it will be sad for me to lose you know i use a scrivener for example okay mm -hmm. i will not like to lose a scrivener Okay, given it exists for Mac and PC, but do not exist for Chromebooks. Okay, I was at some point thinking on buying me a cheap Chromebook for thing, something, and was exactly that what took the Chromebook out, that I could not have that, that I could not copy and paste from one device to the other. So all those subtleties that we don't tend to think, you know, what is the weight? What is the style do I want? Do I want... A machine like a tablet okay like the surface style or do i want a more traditional laptop do i want where do you want the center of gravity of that machine okay a laptop or do you want a desktop you know how large that screen is coming so and that is fun because that allows you to think on possibilities what mm -hmm. can what can make better my everyday working it's going to be a larger screen. It's going to be a more compact, portable thing. You know, how can, if I add new things, well, for example, when I got the first iPad with a pencil, okay, 
how these do I buy the one with a pencil that that case was in iPad Pro 9.7 or do I buy at that time I think it was the iPad Air 2 okay that do not have the pencil okay is the pencil going to change really the way I use the the product yes or no and in many cases we don't know but it gives you that opportunity to play into possibility mm -hmm. With hardware, it's one of those things that we often, there are aspects of the hardware upgrade that we don't take into consideration until it's too late in the decision-making process. Mm -hmm. um, here, here's a little trivia question for you. Uh, what's the one button you use more than anything on your computer? I don't know. It's your space bar. You hit okay. the space bar more frequently than you hit any other button on your computer. Okay. And the reason why I call that out is because the keyboard is probably the most personally interactive aspect of any device. Agreed. So when you're looking at upgrading, we're often looking at the monitor, we're looking at the picture, we're looking at the colors. But what we're not taking into consideration is the fact that that keyboard is different by design than the one we've been using up until this date. So unless we have a keyboard that we're going to move over, ergo not update, we're going to have to make sure we're comfortable with that new keyboard because we both know what it's like to use a keyboard you don't like. Yes. It's a, it's a nightmare. It's a and train I, wreck. Yeah. And it actually... You are not going to be to... able to train to to type no. enough on a store to really say, okay, this is good. No, no, you can tell right away when you don't like something, but you can't tell if it's going to be a perfect fit. Correct. And you and you have that, I'm a, I'm a big one who likes um, laptop style keys. I like that low profile, short throw key. Um, I'm a big fan of that, I always have, even though I grew up on the mechanical IBM, right. you know, that it sounds like woodpeckers turned loose in your house. A lot of people love those mechanical style keys. This is a this is an upgrade consideration because when we think about being productive, if I have to sit there and write a report or write a blog article or send an email, my interface is that keyboard. Yep. And if I don't like that, I've negatively impacted my productivity it's the and, same. You, and, and you like me works sometimes on your machine sometimes on the client mm -hmm. machine okay yeah. where you have no option to pick okay you're doing this and the client send you this machine and you're working in this machine and now you are dealing with exactly that you know the, the awful keyboard okay and i had one machine that <laughs> share with me and I decided that the only way for me to work into that thing was typing on an email. So I email my, I type on my computer or my keyboard that mm -hmm. I like, send it via email, copy paste. I was willing to copy paste, but I wasn't willing to do long typing into that machine because it was off. Yeah, I actually have a setup and this is when we think about upgrading systems. When I upgraded from my old desktop to this all in one device that I have, I needed the ability to, because it has two ports on it. One is an HDMI out for a secondary monitor, mm -hmm. but one is an HDMI in mm -hmm. that allows me to route other devices in and turn this into a secondary monitor for them. Well, that from my cross-platform environment works really well because then I can connect multiple mm -hmm. machines to this. Well, I needed a keyboard video mouse switch box to allow me to do that. So I had to integrate that in. The upside is I get to use the same keyboard and mouse with all the different devices. So I have that continuity, which is very nice. The downside is, is I've got a bunch of extra wiring and there's some machinations I have to go through when switching between machines and things like that. So there's a plus and a minus to both of those, but I didn't recognize that until well into having this all in one in place. It didn't, didn't occur to me as to the potential positive or negative impact on my productivity that this upgrade was going to have. I just like, hey, it's a better computer. I'm going to take it and I'm going to use it. So 
this is where when we think about this process of upgrading and we see all this cool tech that's coming out right now, uh, just simple question. And we're going to talk about it in the future when we, when we have our Microsoft Surface episode. Going from a desktop to a laptop, going from a, a laptop to oh, a tablet or to a tablet configuration. That's a whole change. That's a significant update and upgrade in your technology. What's the impact going to be? Think about it from just a monitor standpoint. If you had to go from the monitor you use now to always using a 15 inch display because that's what's on your laptop, would that work? Or do you have to actually add more to get more productivity out of your environment? This is, this is that ripple effect of upgrades that we can see all the time. And it's, unfortunately, it's, it is so easy to go and purchase something to add to our system, mm -hmm. to think it's going to help without understanding that often eh, it may not it may help not. all that. Yeah, that it may not tie in as well. I have headphones galore, wired headphones, wireless headphones, earbuds, all of which had the initial objective of improving my productivity somehow, either through virtual meetings or listening to audiobooks. Very few of them have lived up to my personal expectations mm -hmm. of them. And that's, again, all of that upgrade mindset that we have to have included into this. So you brought up a really interesting point there, Augusto, a bit ago, and I wanted to go back and revisit it. When we're thinking about changing platforms, mm -hmm. and this is probably the biggest thing, going not within a particular vertical, like going from Samsung device to Samsung device, but let's say going from a Windows device to an Apple device or from even, an Apple. Even to Windows a, to Windows, even if you go Samsung to Lenovo, Samsung to HP, yep. it is so much that it changed because that's, that's for me one thing that is complicated for, for the average user is, you know, when you go to an Apple, for good or for bad, yeah, you're going to get, but it's the difference are mining. Okay, you're going to get mm -hmm. a MacBook Air, a MacBook Pro, but you will be on the pretty much same animal. On the Windows world, that's now a completely different game because when you move, when you stay and you buy only Samsung or only HP, you stay into that. As soon as you said, I'm going to go to the next brand, okay, mm -hmm. that game change. Keyboards change, the devices change, and everything is different. So it gets really an additional layer of change. Because that's another advantage Chromebooks has. You buy a Chromebook, you buy the other Chromebook. As soon as you pass the, the keyboard difference and all this, the machine will be the same. Mm -hmm. On Windows, that's not necessarily true. Well, and let's think about it, though, even bigger than that. If I go from Apple to anything else, the odds are very good. I need all new peripherals. Mm-hmm because the cable connectors aren't the same. Wireless chargers aren't the same. There's no duplication of technology, which from a business standpoint and getting people locked into an ecosystem so that they buy those devices, yes, you get the benefits of all that uniformity, uh, but this is the downside of it. And the same thing applies, like you said, within the Windows space. It even applies within the Chromebook space, I'll argue. There are certain vendors that Samsung's one of them. If, if I take my Samsung Chromebook and I pull the S Pen off of it, because it has one, I can use it on any other Samsung device that supports an S Pen. It's really useful. It's really convenient. And it completely goes away if I put something else in that mix, if I get a different Chromebook, because they're not supported by anything else besides Samsung devices. So it's this kind of siloed approach that we have to be cognizant of when we start to do our updates and we start to do our upgrades. Am I buying into something that I'm okay with investing in that particular silo or do I want something that's going to be open across the board? 
Am I going to get an HP or a Lenovo or an Acer or an Asus rather than getting one of the, you know, getting a Microsoft, for example, or getting a Samsung or getting an Apple? What are the pros and cons of those combinations? Now, luckily, what we're talking about here is really just three different operating systems uh, across those devices, even though there's lots of different hardware manufacturers on, on the Windows and the Chrome OS side. When you look at mobile devices, well, you really oh yeah yeah that that gets even more complicated. That gets really convoluted. I mean, I, I'll give a perfect example. For quite a while, I had the Moto G two, um, or I'm sorry, the Moto Z Force, and Force two and Z. I forget the things, but they had the Moto mods. They were magnetized onto the back of the phone, and they could do different things. They had speakers, and they had cameras and things. Mm-hmm. Really neat idea. Great. When that phone line died, all those peripherals are useless now. They can't be used anywhere else. So for that time period that you have that investment in that particular hardware configuration, you're going to reap benefits from it. But at some point, those benefits will go away. So you have to be thinking about, okay, when these are not available anymore, how will I supplant this? Right. We, we've actually had that conversation very recently when we were talking about the Samsung Note or the Note line within the Samsung line because there's been talk that maybe Samsung's going to kill off the Note line. And as a, as a productivity platform, it has a very loyal user base. They've taken some of the S Pen capability and spread it to other devices, which right. means if my productivity platform is built around or significantly includes use of an S Pen, this is opening up more potential channels for me. But if it's built around the capability of a note, and it may not just be what it can do, but the fact that I am comfortable enough that it's an integral part of my system, Mm -hmm. when that goes away, now what do I do? How much of a loss am I at? And this is where, again, Whatever your upgrades are, you should always be thinking about what's the next potential step. Where is the next direction I may want to look at being able to go? And again, what's my backup plan? When it comes to things like calendars and schedules and to-do lists, I know that regarding, even if all my technology was turned off, I can still manage it all by paper. Right. I can do that. The only things I can't do for that is, you know, messaging and email. And that's probably not bad to have those go away for a while. Uh, But that type of a backup plan, I at least know I can get through things for a short period of time. But you need to do that. You really need to think about this upgrade process. As announcements come out, as we're looking at, you know, we're approaching holiday season, we're going to start to see... You know, Black Friday announcements and, and Cyber Monday, which is the big thing now instead of Black Friday. Those are big push item or times for, hey, get this, get that. But Augusto, as we were talking about earlier, supply chain issues right now are really, and chip ish shortages are making accessibility to these upgrades mm-hmm. harder. So you have to really think, do oh, I yeah. want to take this step? Can I even take this step or can I prolong what I have? What is, what is the benefit that I'm going to derive from that upgrade? Have you ever done an upgrade and realized that it wasn't worth it? Oh, more than once. Uh, the first upgrade that it wasn't worth it was, was the little Asus. Well, we're called the, the little notebooks. Oh, the, the netbooks. Inches, the notebooks. Yeah, the, the, the netbooks. Yeah, yeah, that was I the first I'm one. pretty sure I have one sitting on the I, floor over here behind me. I was heavily traveling, and I thought, oh, you know what? I can buy that thing. It was cheap enough. Mm-hmm. And then I can use that machine as I travel instead of carrying the bazillion of heavy machines that I wore. Nope. It was a disaster. The possibility was there. But the execution was so so flawed that it completely outweighed its game. Yeah, I have netbooks were a big thing for quite a while, pre Chrome OS days. 
Um, it, it's I always equate note netbooks to buying your first compact car. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like, yeah, it can get you from point to A, from A to B, and that's all it can do. It's, it was, un, they were underpowered devices. They were right. undersized devices. The battery life was poor, but they could at least run. And I actually used a netbook quite a bit for quite a while. Yeah, the um, screen wasn't my problem. The screen size was never my issue. The, the, the lack of power was mm -hmm. on the keyboard. The, the, the keyboard, I don't know why they never made it. They, they never made any of those keyboards as comfortable as a small keyboard can be. Part so, of the, yeah, and not, not to tangent too much on netbooks, but it's a great example of the challenge that Chromebooks initially faced mm -hmm. and that they were coming out targeted for a low cost, low price point audience to offer almost the same level of functionality as to what you would pay for right. double double the price of the device. Well, I remember netbooks being, you know, $250, $300. Those unfortunately were very underpowered and the operating system that was running on them, Windows 7 in many cases, just couldn't run in that small of a device. Just couldn't run on that underpowered of a device. Chromebooks, when they first came out, they had that same specter hanging over them. Yeah. Oh, this will never be powerful enough. It, you know, it's it's an anemic little machine. It won't have the capabilities. The difference is, is that the Chrome OS operating system was built from the ground up to be able to work on those types of devices. Correct. Which has made all the difference because now you have an operating system in Chrome OS built to run on lower powered devices that are now getting higher powered devices to run with it. So it's, it's like buying, you know, a sports car and then putting in turbochargers. I mean, you're going to get more for what you even had in the first place. So there's, when we start to think about this upgrade path that we go through, we have to really consider, am I doing this upgrade because I see a clear and direct benefit or problem solved from doing this upgrade? And am I willing to accept the negatives that come along with it? I mean, we both, as we talk about things like netbooks, um, we both got them to solve, mm -hmm. solve specific problems. Right. But the problems that they brought along with them made it difficult for them to truly be of long-term benefit. Correct. Uh, when you think back to handhelds, when handhelds first started coming out and like Palm OS devices and things like that, they had great potential to do all kinds of benefits for us. But there were also lots of devices that fell into that upgrade category that just fell woefully short of what they could potentially do. Palm OS devices actually, they, they met their billing pretty well. They did exactly what they were supposed to do, and they did it with surprising resiliency. Oh, I agree. On the, on the Windows side, Ooh, not so much. The Windows so C, much. the Windows CE devices, again, they were trying to play in a space that they they weren't comfortable with. They were trying to bring a device to offer a level of portability that would be enticing, but there were too many downsides, and the technology basically failed us in meeting the value of that upgrade. So we have to look at our upgrades and we have to say, where is the immediate benefit to me? Um, what's my back out plan if I decide I don't like it? I, I have to admit, the term buyer's remorse always creeps into my mind when I think about upgrades. I mean, how often have we done an upgrade and we're okay with it in the long run, but there's so often that we'll be sitting there using something going, man, that old thing just did this particular thing better. Just to, I had I had that quite a bit when I got my Note 20 Ultra because I knew in a drawer I still had a Pixel 4 XL sitting and I knew the camera even though the physical hardware camera on the Note is better the software on that Pixel was superior and right. it could it could take and every time I was taking pictures I'm looking I'm like yeah I can clean the pictures up and I can make them look really good but on the Pixel I didn't have to. 
So there was always that little bit of buyer's remorse with that yeah, particular I, aspect. That happened to me when I moved from a MacBook Pro to a MacBook Air. I moved from 13 inches to 11 inches. Mm -hmm. And and I did it. And, it, and the 11 inches has been an incredible machine. I mean, bought it 2013, it's still running. So was not the machine. Was I made it and then I made it for the portability. And after I did all the process move, the difference was so small. Mm -hmm. you know, I don't know if I missed it. And that's that's an interesting, uh, and I'm glad you brought that up because this is the last area I want to talk about today, is what is compelling an upgrade? We're going to go through next week with a lot of hardware announcements from mm -hmm. major manufacturers. A lot of hoopla. There's going to be a lot of press. So many blog, you know, blog articles will be written. Podcasts will be recorded talking about all the tech. But I have to go back and ask people who are considering to upgrade what is compelling that upgrade for example if you have let's say a pixel 5 is the pixel 6 that much of an improvement will it make you more productive will it benefit you or is it just the fact that it's the new thing is it right. is it shiny object syndrome uh, it's hard to say so often, you know, those of us who like to be on the bleeding edge of tech go through shiny object syndrome. They get, you know, they get the newest thing, try it out. And, ah, yeah, this is great. And then they move on. It's that change factor. But when you're talking about establishing your productive platform, changing things in and out of it all the time is not productive. It's spinning a lot of wheels. It's, it's, it'd be like changing your car every other day. You're never going to get comfortable with it. You're never going to get into a routine with that particular item. So thinking about your upgrade and deciding why you're doing the upgrade. The last piece of advice I give to people is never upgrade as soon as you think you need to. Mm -hmm. If you immediately feel like you need to upgrade, start the process of researching, but don't actually do the upgrade yet. Give yourself time to go through the information, dig through it. This is where I think things like wish lists instead of shopping carts are so powerful. If you, you have that in, oh man, I want to get a new monitor. Fine. Sit there, go through Amazon, go through Best Buy, go through you know, Newegg, wherever. Look at all the, and put them into a wish list. Start putting that into, but don't put it into a shop cart and sure as heck don't buy it first day. Well, and, and I give you the perfect example for what you're sharing was Windows 11. When Windows 11 came mm -hmm. out, I said, oh, I can, I should create a virtual machine for testing. So when customers mm -hmm. call me, you know, I'm ready for it if they needed to. And I went to Amazon, but the, I need a new uh, drive, a new pen drive, so I can install it externally, mm -hmm. Ben and all that. And suddenly it's coming, oh. It's not going to be as easy yet to install because they're not going to let me install it yet on my virtual machine. I don't know why, mm -hmm. but they are not. Uh, it's part of what they're doing. Even that parallel says they are going to be able to do it. There is not yet an easy way to do it. Right. So then it comes the thing. Okay, well, do I go and buy a new a new PC just so I could play and test? And I get it. I that's part of what I do for work. So knowing how the things work is important. Case there is, but then it comes a question. It's going to be a lot of difference between Windows 10 and Windows 11 for me to justify whatever is that gap on the expense. Okay. Mm -hmm. And and I agree with you. I begin writing that list of things. It's worth it. It's not worth it. Do I need it? Do I not need it? And at the end of the day, the decision for me was, no, let's wait until it hits the road and Parallels can install it so I don't need to have, mm -hmm. I don't need additional screens in my office. So it's now a matter of time. And anyways, I have not seen yet people adopting it as fast as no, and it's, they want it. It's interesting when you look at upgrades because you have to decide, uh, for example, on Chrome OS, that's, that's a perfect example where upgrades happen 
basically invisibly. Mm-hmm. Every time I'm going in, there's another software patch that's coming through that has upgrades to the browser and things like that, and functionality changes. That's nice. That piece of hardware is still going to be used for quite some time. No change there. And I'm going to keep going through and using it until they stop updating the security on it. Why? Because right. the hardware works. I'm not going to see a huge performance increase if I jump to another device. I might. I might want to upgrade it for various reasons, but straight up, so works. Might as well keep working with it. And you you brought up a good point about that idea of, okay, maybe I'll get a new machine and, and I'll see the benefits. What's going to happen now is you're going to compare this new hardware and this new operating system to your old hardware and old operating Correct. system. And it, you know, it's, it's like doing algebra. If you have two variables that you're trying to solve for, it's, it's not nearly as easy as just one basic change, seeing how much, for example, the operating system upgrade helps. And in many cases, it doesn't. The system, it has to work harder or, or whatever is the case. So mm-hmm. long story short, upgrading can be one of those challenges that it takes a lot of work and a lot of planning, but my recommendation to everybody is take your time with it. Do your reading, do your research, lay out a plan, lay out a backup plan, lay out a rollback plan so that you're ready when you take this chance to kind of upset your apple cart. You don't have stuff all over the place. You're able to get back into the swing of things very quickly. And and it is important to plan how that's going to be, where it's going to be the backups. And, you know, as I told people, don't plan for the best scenario, plan for the worst case scenario. So that way you can really consider all the possible problems and you can really get a good result. Absolutely. So I just wanted to, as we wrap up here, I just want to call out a couple of things that are coming up. Uh, we mentioned it a couple of times next week. We have a bunch of special episodes that we're going to be recording to talk about Google's announcements. Uh, Samsung has come out of the woodwork saying, hey, we have more announcements. We have Apple's, more to say. Mm-hmm. Apple's has announcements. I believe they're going to be probably around the AirPods and the MacBooks. So there's a lot of hardware that's coming to talk about next week. Uh, in the future, we're going to be addressing things um, not only around updates, we're going to go back and revisit some hardware announcements from last week, talking about the Microsoft Surface, uh, specifically because it's a different kind of device and dig into it. So we've got not only just a bunch of hardware stuff, but a bunch of additional topics coming up. So if you're following this on YouTube, make sure you you hit that like button, you hit subscribe, you cl- you ring the bell, so that way you get notified of new episodes coming out. If you're listening to this on your favorite podcast tool, make you, sure you subscribe so you don't li- miss out on any of this. And if you have a topic or any information that you want us to cover or questions that you'd like us to dig into, reach out to us YouTube comments, you can reach out to us directly, or you can come over to the Professional Productivity Club and our personal productivity. Club. Personal Did I mess that up? Com. Personal you messed that up. Yes, that was I not messed a it up. Yes. That was personal. not a blipper. It's all right. Personal productivity dot club. Come over, join us. Not only do we have this show there, but there's a bunch of other shows and other topics. So please join us. We'd love to hear from you. And with that, I'll pass it back to you, Augusto, and we can We are Augusto Pinot on our Gelwicks and see you next time from your favorite.